Charles, good morning. Shall we start? Are you ready? Your microphone is up. You just Charles, can you hear me? <clears throat> Your microphone is up. Is, is, is just uh, uh, Charles, can you hear me? Uh, Charles, your microphone is up. Just you scroll yes. down in your it's, it's on now. Okay. It's okay, now. okay. Okay. So okay. you are uh, yeah. sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Okay. So I'm okay. So in okay, very good morning to all of you. Uh, it is our pleasure to welcome all our participants from India and outside India to the third day of this international webinar on migration and human trafficking. Today, we have here to welcome Dr. Charles Onumenu. He is Assistant Professor at the Jan Adams College of Social Work at the University of Illinois, Chicago. I'm going to read his, because he has done a lot of extensive work on the migration and human trafficking in Africa and United States. So just I'm going to brief his curriculum detail so that um, our participants can and know about the work of Dr. Charles. Dr. Charles' research area is human trafficking, commercial sexual exploitation of children, and human rights of detainees, immigration, and refugees. In 2009, Dr. Charles conducted the first ever study on inputs of a statewide coalition in the implementation of human trafficking policy in the United States. In 2013 and 14, he was the principal investigator of an international comparative study of sex trafficking and its link with the child migration in three countries in West Africa. One of his research, one of his current research project is needs assessment of children actively engaged in sex in a major in the Midwest region of the United States. Another project is exploring the influence of private investigators in the fight against human trafficking in the United States. The first a former full back scholar and has published a book and 12 peer review journals articles, two book chapters on human traffic. He has provided consultations on issues of human trafficking in African countries and in the United States. Recently, in March 2020, Dr. Charles received the University of Illinois at Chicago 2019 Rising Star Award in Social Research. In 2018, the International Human Trafficking and Social Justice Conference Influential, Influential Scholar Award for his work on human trafficking and social justice issues. So Charles, it yeah. is our immense pleasure to welcome you from the University for this international webinar. And I'm sure your presentation on global characteristics of commercial sexual expression of children is going to raise lots of inquietudes and, um, you know, many, you know, going to give many inputs on the human trafficking problems which is prevailing 
in India and across the world. So, Charles, the yeah. microphone is yours. Okay. Oh, thank, you you very much. Much. thank you very much, Aaron. Uh, it is a great honor uh, for me uh, to have been invited uh, on your international uh, webinar organized by uh, uh, Sambalpur University okay, of India. So, uh, so I consider that a privilege to be presenting. And um, I uh, want to cover uh, uh, an issue which is uh, discussed a lot in the literature. But what I'm trying to do here is uh, talking about it at uh, the global level, which means that I will also be touching uh, on India regarding uh, the issue of uh, um, uh, commercial sexual exploitation of children. You have uh, here um, the outline of my presentation. I hope I will have enough time to cover my points. So uh, I will briefly define uh, um, what we call a commercial sexual exploitation, uh, which I people generally say CSEC. And uh, I will briefly also uh, talk about uh, the overview of the issue and then uh, try to cover uh, briefly uh, to have a bird idea of the issue in, uh, the, on the different uh, continents. As you see, I'm covering a lot, so I will just uh, have to highlight uh, the main issue regarding um, uh, CSEC in, uh, on each uh, continent. So, let's move to the next slide. Okay. First of all, before getting to the overview, let me, uh, even though I know most of the people um, following uh, this webinar now know what uh, um, CSEC is, I will try to define it uh, again by starting uh, talking about uh, the issue of child uh, trafficking, which is uh, defined um, in Article 3C of uh, the United Nations Protocol to prevent, suppress, and punish uh, trafficking in person especially women and children of 2000, which define child trafficking as uh, the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of a child for the purpose of exploitation. And here, exploitation includes prostitution um, and other forms of sexual exploitation of children. I'm talking about uh, um, child sex tourism. I'm talking about uh, child pornography. Okay, and also exploitation includes the use or offering of a child for illicit activities, all forms of slavery or practices similar to slavery, and also work which by its nature or the circumstances in which it's carried out is likely to harm the health and safety of uh, children. So, based on that definition of child trafficking, you can find the issue of child sex trafficking, and then you can also find child labor. Child labor or child forced labor. It's the same, okay? So today, we want to cover the issue of child sex trafficking. The, uh, the, the term child sex trafficking, even though it is more legally uh, considered is less used today than the term CSEC. So when I talk about child sex trafficking, I'm talking about CSEC, which is not yet a legally binding term, but it's very popular. Child sex trafficking or CSEC encompasses a range of crime of a sexual nature committed against minors. When I say minors, I'm talking about anyone below age 18. So it can be difficult to, to separate the two concepts because they are highly related. So when I talk about CSEC, the, the, the International Labor Organization defines CSEC as the sexual exploitation by uh, an adult, okay, with respect to the child or adolescent, female or male, 
under 18 years old, accompanied by a payment in money or in kind to the child or um, any, any other part, any third uh, part. So when I talk about uh, CSEC, I'm talking about uh, different types of uh, uh, sexual exploitation. The main one we know is a child prostitution, okay? And the UN protocol uh, to the Convention uh, of, on the Rights of the Child on the Sale of for Children, Child Prostitution, and Child Pornography of 2000, in its Article 2B, define, defines child prostitution. Okay, as the use of a child in sexual activities for remuneration or any form of, of consideration. So that's the first, uh, the most known form of uh, C-SEC. Another uh, one uh, known also under the UN optional protocol is a child pornography. Child pornography, which refers to, uh, refers to any representation by whatever means of a child engaged in real or simulated explicit uh, sexual activities or any representation of sexual part of a child for sexual purposes. Another form which is considered CSEC is the fact of taking the child from somewhere to another place. It's called trafficking in children for sexual purposes. You can see that the definitions seem to overlap, okay? Which is which refers to any act related to the recruitment, transport, okay? Transfer, harboring, or receipt of, of a child within the country or across borders, okay? By means of deception, coercion, or fraud, for the purpose of putting the child in a situation of sexual abuse. Then we have uh, what we call child sex tourism also known today as uh, uh, sex tourism involving children, or it's also called sex, um, sexual exploitation of children in travel and tourism. So today people are trying to use other terms to say uh, the same thing, okay? And sometimes it's kind of debatable. People think that some forms of child marriage is, uh, are considered C-SEC, depending on the way the child has been uh, forced to get married. It can be considered also C-SEC, so long as there is some kind of counterpart or remuneration. So you can see that the, uh, the issue of C-SEC uh, encompasses almost four or five times uh, types of, of sexual exploitation. Related to that, we can talk also about uh, uh, the issue of uh, online sexual exploitation, all of them are included. So these are a bit uh, the forms of uh, even, um, of, of uh, commercial sexual exploitation of children. So now coming back to what I have there, you can see I talk about factors of vulnerability to CSEC. And I talk about uh, CSEC manifestation and emerging trends. I am going to talk about uh, uh, most of the, those um, um, points I put there for each uh, continent. I might be talking about at least half of those points for each uh, uh, continent, demographic factors, economic factors, demographic uh, transition and youth uh, unemployment, poverty and inequality, uh, gender discrimination, harmful tradition, and so on and so forth. And then we'll talk about the trends uh, in CSEC. We we'll talk about the uh, issue of uh, prostitution, uh, trafficking of children for sexual exploitation, and uh, other forms of uh, CSEC. Okay, let's start uh, with um, uh, Europe. Uh, I didn't put that in any, uh, any, the order that is not based on anything, I just put it in that way so that people understand. Okay, so I'm going to talk about CSEC in Europe. Okay, we talk, when we talk about the continent of Europe, you can see uh, we are talking about over uh, 50 uh, countries in Europe. We're talking about over 50 countries. 
And uh, uh, in those countries, you can also find that uh, others will join them in the 1990s, when after they broke uh, off from, uh, the, I mean, USSR. Okay, so the World Health Organization estimates that uh, almost 18 million children have been subjected to child sexual abuse and exploitation in Europe. And it's also found that uh, almost 43% of all identified cases of human trafficking in Europe were, uh, were related to children. So children were the victims of such form. So I will be talking about a specific issue, uh, as I said, regarding uh, factors of vulnerability. Talking, for example, about the issue of uh, uh, racism and discrimination. I can say that uh, in, in, in Europe, most of the time, you can see that most of the time, minorities suffer racism. If you have, for example, the issue of people we call Roma, Roma are gypsies and travelers. They travel uh, through Europe and they do not have uh, any specific country. This, this population is a highly victim of uh, human trafficking, of CSEC precisely. Uh, there is one organization we call ECPAT, 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 which is based in Thailand. Okay, it asks most countries to have a report to, to detail, to, um, to show how they address the issue of uh, CSEC in the world. And actually, most of my presentation is uh, uh, based on uh, what ECPAC has done as research. So, some of these reports show that children with a migrant background and children with disabilities are particularly exposed to CSEC in Europe. Now, let me talk about uh, gaps in child welfare and uh, a protection system in, the, in, uh, in uh, Europe. Well, and I will give some example. Um, a study recently uh, conducted by the Child Exploitation on, and Child and Online Protection okay in europe okay reveals for example that uh, the, the sexual exploitation and uh, of for children occurs within a wide range of institutions in europe including care homes schools churches sports club youth groups and charities you may not know but uh, research has shown that child welfare is a bridge to CSEC. You may not know, like most children who are in the foster care system are highly vulnerable to CSEC. I have even written a paper about that. Research has also shown that children in Eastern Europe, okay, are increasingly being separated from their parents, indicating vulnerability to CSEC. Now, let's talk briefly about the issue of peer pressure, peer pressure, and also uh, the, the misuse of uh, informa informational uh, technology. Today, today, research has shown that in Europe, uh, peer pressure and uh, issue of uh, consumerism in Europe, okay, have led children, youth, to share sexualized images of themselves, making them vulnerable to abuse and potentially leading to issue of child pornography. So I will talk now about the issue of uh, uh, trafficking of children um, in, uh, in, uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, um, uh, set for, for sexual purposes, okay? Uh, child trafficking for sexual purposes 
has occurred in every European country. Children have been taken mostly from Eastern Europe to West, Western Europe for the purpose of exploiting them. For example, in October 2014, it was published a study which showed that uh, more than 30,000 victims in the 28 European Union um, countries between 2010 and 2012 were reported, and of which 80% were female and 69 of them were children trafficked for sexual exploitation. And talking about that, in some European countries, okay, child domestic trafficking for sexual purposes has been reported to be growing. What do I call um, uh, domestic trafficking? Most people think that children uh, or people who are victims of trafficking are moved from a, uh, from a country to another one. No. And research has shown that uh, most victims of uh, commercial sexual exploitation of children have never left their country. In, across, across, the, across the globe, Research has consistently shown that more than 75% of children who are victims of CSEC have been victimized in their own country. I will uh, try to move uh, to another, um, to another uh, uh, continent. So, commercial sexual exploitation of children in the USA. Okay, um, I, I know a lot about the issue here because I have done research about that. So I, I feel that I have more information, but I will just share the, the basic I have. You know, it has been estimated that the, in the US, there are 403,000 victims of modern, modern day slavery. Okay, and what happens, as I was saying, is that, that most of the time, most of the time, 85% of victims of sex trafficking in the US were natives of US. They have never left US. People will think these children were brought in. No, most of the children or most of the victims were US citizens. And CSEC, has been reported in all the 50 countries. In the US, sometimes people just, you know, they talk about CSEC, they talk about CSEC as equal to domestic minor sex trafficking or se survival sex. Let me make it clear. CSEC is not limited to domestic. It's also domestic practice. It's also international. So it's not right to make CSEC equal to domestic minor sex trafficking. It's domestic minor sex trafficking only when it affects citizens of a country. Okay. As I said before, CSEC, even though we are used to this term since, the 90, uh, since 1996, it is a term which is not legally uh, represented in uh, most UN uh, documents. So, in the US, we talk about the, uh, DMST or survival sex. Some people even think that survival sex, they say survival sex is not CSEC. Of course, I disagree because uh, according to the definition of uh, uh, CSEC and uh, specifically of uh, child prostitution, any child in the sex trade uh, taking money or not, or taking in kind or uh, getting services, any child in bad situation is a victim of CSEC. So I cannot say that survival sex is different or is out of uh, CSEC. It's part of it. The most important law in the US which is probably one of the best law in the laws in the world, the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, uh, which was enacted in 2000, has covered 
a lot about the protection of uh, children who are victims of uh, CSEC. Okay, under that law, anyone under the age of 18 involved in the sex trade, I was say, uh, as I was saying, is a victim. So even when anyone is seen with a child who is below age 18, that person is considered to be automatically as a, a trafficker. Okay, and the good thing is that in the last, um, I would say, 10 years, many states have, uh, many states passed a law, they call safe harbor law. That law, that law prevents the, uh, the arrest, the prosecution of anyone who is a child below age, a person below age 18 in, in prostitution. That person needs help and doesn't need to be prosecuted. And it has been passed in many states, even though the law is not respected uh, much. Um, to finish with the US, I have to say this. Most of the time, people will say, people say almost every child victim of CSEC has issue of trauma. Every child in the in CSEC has a pain. I am among the very few researchers trying to convey that actually most of the victims, most of the victims in CSEC do not have any pain. I am among the very few people saying that most of the children in the sex trade, I mean the CSEC, they have agency, which means that they are, they are capable to control who they go with or not. But most research will say, no, 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 they are controlled by pimps. Of course, few of them are, but not all of them. And actually, recent research conducted in the last 10 years, or I would say six years, has been showing that, that actually it's not the case. And also, Recent research in the last, uh, I will say, 12 years has shown that uh, the thinking, the thought that 90% uh, or 70% of the victims of uh, CSEC are girls is uh, not uh, true. Close to 50% of uh, victims of CSEC in the US are boys. And few papers have addressed that, but that's the reality. Okay, let's talk now about the um, issue for uh, commercial sexual exploitation in uh, uh, Latin America. Okay, Latin America, as you know, um, it is uh, uh, those countries uh, of who has uh, uh, a common history of uh, being colonized by um, uh, uh, the Spanish or the Portuguese, so we call them uh, Latin America. Okay, so uh, I think if you have 20 countries uh, which are considered um, uh, which are part of Latin America. The region, as you can see in picture, is a place of destination, origin, and transit of men, women, and children subject to forced labor and sex trafficking, which means that people are taken to those bad regions, people are taken from it, some people go through it, for example, when being trafficked into the US. And most of the time, you see that rich people will leave the US and go to um, cities where they have resorts, and uh, uh, in Panama or other places like uh, Cancun, Cancun in uh, Mexico. And I know that uh, Arun has written a lot about uh, that issue in uh, Mexico. I know that he's uh, an expert uh, on human trafficking in uh, Mexico. It is estimated that over 2 million Latin American children are victims of, of CSEC. Uh, the biggest issue is that uh, issue of corruption and organized crime play a big role in uh, what trafficking is. Now, let me talk specifically about issue of uh, demographic factors as being uh, affecting uh, trafficking uh, CSEC in Latin America. 
you know, um, economic inequality and uh, poor um, income distribution in Latin America has resulted in large numbers, actually, of children living in poverty, okay? According to uh, one study in 2000, okay, approximately 4.4 uh, million, okay, children were living in poverty uh, uh, 20 years ago in uh, that region. Talking about economic factors that uh, um, I, I can consider uh, factors of vulnerability. It has been shown, okay, that uh, in Latin America, the fact that many people are not able to get jobs, most families being farmers, and also the fact that many children are not able to go to school, that is a key determinant for entry in, uh, in the issue of uh, uh, CSEC. Now, another issue is gender discrimination. Okay, gender discrimination is an issue almost everywhere, possibly um, more than four or five countries, okay, uh, continents, okay? In Latin America, for example, I will say 71, 71%. I'm talking about 71, 71% of women and girls are active in the labor market, okay? And they are present, present most of the time in the informal sector, okay? According to a study uh, done by uh, Morrison et al., okay? And they conducted a review. They found that in 15 different countries in Latin America, between 7 and 69% of women have been physically abused by an intimate partner. Violence against women and children, including sexual violence and exploitation, is facilitated by, I will say, cultural and historical norms which are associated with the issue. Okay, so let me talk about other thing. Harmful traditional practices. A number of traditions and customs in Latin America have contributed to make children and adolescents vulnerable to sexual exploitation. For example, we have what they call uh, um, an issue of, uh, and I, I'm sure um, Arun will help me about that, a Padre, Padre Nazgo, Padre Nazgo, which is having a child having a godfather. It's observed in rural areas. It leads to issue of C set. So another thing is, for example, in some cases, a child is trusted, is entrusted to care to someone who has to take care for the child. And that person, most of the time, will use the child just in the sex trade. Since we are talking about the issue of uh, uh, migration and human trafficking, I have to say that uh, few Latin American countries uh, have, uh, have adopted specific uh, measures to ensure the right of uh, migrant children. As you know, many children have been trying to come to the US and they are not even accompanied. So those people are highly vulnerable to CSEC. They come from very far maybe 2,000 miles to come to the U.S. and some of them get lost and they fall victim of uh, CSEP. Now, CSEP manifestation and emerging trends, I will talk about it. Let's say that uh, in Latin America, child prostitution is uh, highly prevalent, okay? And in most cases, actually, uh, child prostitution businesses are controlled by close family members who work with criminal groups. Children sometimes are forced into a business and they have to do that or their families can be hurt. Something else, 
we talked recently, I said that uh, uh, Latin America is a great place for tourism. Automatically, you can guess that it's a place also for child access tourism. This place, okay, has shown, research has shown that uh, travelers will go to that region, okay, just for child sex tourism, which is a big issue in, in uh, um, Latin America. Another thing is that more and more children who are online, they are using information and communication technologies. They are falling victim of fraud. Uh, Saharan Africa. Uh, you may not know, I am an African. I am from Benin, Benin in West Africa. Okay, a beautiful place, but a small country, of course. Okay, so South Saharan Africa, where I have conducted research before. So when I say Sub-Saharan Africa, I have excluded four, four countries which are in the north of uh, Africa. I'm going to talk about them when I talk about Middle East. So 46 countries. And uh, all these countries have uh, black people, OK? Black people, OK? And some of these countries are considered among are among the, the poorest and least developed countries in the world. Okay, based on what I have done as study, as research in the place, I noticed that most children in CSEC, mostly in prostitution, they are doing that just for survival. They're not doing that to help anyone, but because their families are poor, they do that to help themselves, and in most cases also to provide economic assistance for their families and even for their children. I, you'll be shocked that I, when I did my study there in three countries, 30% of the participants who are below age, who are below age 18, had children. They had children? even though they were not yet 18, and they were in the sex trade to provide for their children. My research also showed that in Sub-Saharan Africa, actually, there, is, there was, I would say, very limited presence of pimps or traffickers in the issue of CSEC, or I would call it a child sex trafficking. My research showed that more than 80% of the children in Niger, in Burkina Faso, in Benin, they were from their own country. They were from the countries where I interviewed them. The only country in which I could say that there were children victims of international trafficking, sex trafficking, was Burkina Faso, in which I found that 30% of my participants were from Nigeria. They were forced, they were lured, they were told they were being taken to Italy. And when they go to Burkina Faso, they were forced to, into the sex trade and they have no will. We talk to them, they won't teach us to save them, but we could not do anything. Also, my study showed that most of the children in CSEC in that region um, did not appear to show any sign of uh, uh, mental health or trauma as we usually see in the uh, main, uh, in mainstream literature. How can I explain that? I think that children who are traumatized, most of them are children who have pimps, who have traffickers torturing them. In that region, very few children have people controlling them or forcing them into, uh, into prostitution. Okay, of course, you know, gender-based violence affects children in that business in, in poorest country. 
but this, it, this, that case can be applicable also to Africa, where you see that most um, uh, people in the, the sex trade are women and girls. Something else which is important to say is that cultural practices in the region have been used or facilitate CSEC in, in, in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Something else, I don't know if the same in other countries, many men wanted to have sex with children because they think that having sex with children will protect them against HIV AIDS. So they will pay a lot of money to have sex with a virgin or very young children. The issue of uh, child sex tourism is a big one. Many uh, uh, people will leave rich countries and travel to countries where there, uh, no one will see them. I'm talking also about African countries, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, I would say uh, Gambia, Senegal, to, to have sex with children and paying their families or paying go between. So child sex tourism is a highly rampant. But at the same time, child sex tourism is viewed in, a, in a, another, another aspect. There is something we call volume tourism. Volume tourism, a term has been created by Ekpat, I think. There are some people who said they are going to, um, to uh, poor countries to help orphans, to assist in orphanages. But actually, they go there just to prey on children. They say they were sponsoring, and they go and stay with the children and do all the things they want. This is called today volume tourism, and it is uh, highly uh, going on in, uh, uh, in West Africa, in countries like uh, Ghana or, or Gambia. OK, the issue of boy prostitution. I may have been probably one of two or three researchers who ever studied the issue of a boy uh, prostitution. I did it, and I was uh, shocked to find uh, actually most boys in the business in uh, Muslim countries. Muslim countries always say, well, no, 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 uh, we don't do that in those kind of things. But most children, who, uh, most boys in prostitution, I noticed were found in Muslim countries. I plan to go to have a full-blown study just focusing on boys here or in the region. OK, um, I don't know. Let me know the rest of the time so that I can shorten what I'm talking about, OK? So let me talk about Middle East, CSEC uh, in Middle East and North Africa. OK, uh, you see, when I talk about uh, Middle East, uh, I'm talking about 13 countries. And when I talk about um, uh, Northern, Northern Africa, I'm talking about uh, four countries, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya. Uh, these are countries mostly considered uh, uh, Northern um, Africa. And sometimes they are treated as part of the uh, Middle East, and uh, together they are called MENA. OK? Uh, why we have uh, some research about uh, sub-Saharan Africa, even though it is not uh, comparable to the volume of research in Europe or uh, America, there is very, very little, there is very, very little study, uh, little uh, research, I will say, on the issue actually in that region of, uh, I will say, the Middle East and uh, Northern Africa. You see, possibly because, you know, they, uh, because most of these countries, all, I would say most of them, or 99% of them are Muslim countries. And people, they, they do not want to talk about anything related to uh, sex trade. It is taboo, but actually it happens a lot. And as we know, there are many issues of uh, um, the ge geopolitical okay, um, issues, humanitarian issues in the Middle East, which limit how to collect data about the issue. But we know that children who are victims 
most of the time it's because of wars the the country um are experiencing okay now i'm gonna talk a little bit about a study a study which was uh, re which was released just two months ago which has provided enough information i'm, I'm just going to highlight a, a few of uh, a few details okay about the mina i'm talking about uh, um uh, mid east uh, and uh, and the uh, north africa okay uh, in the study it was found that uh, um, there are few official official statistics on the trafficking of person in the study in the study uh, the report that was presented it was said that uh, while there are no official uh, statistics on child victim many countries in the region talking about bahrain iran israel and others are destination countries for trafficking victims from Europe, Southeast Asia, South Asia, Central Asia, and so on and so forth. Some countries are also transit countries, okay? We also, I read in that report that uh, some countries in the Middle East, um, such as Yemen, okay? I have children who are trafficked to Saudi Arabia. Arabia. You know, Saudi Arabia is a rich country. So most of the time, children are trafficked from poor countries in the region to rich country, and then taken in palaces in Saudi Arabia just for exploitation. The report also showed that yeah. what is happening in the Middle East is a cause for more research because there is a lot of inequality which push uh, which which pushes a lot of parents to make their uh, their children available for marriage the issue of child marriage is a big one in the region children below age 18 a lot of them have been given into marriage and nothing has been done about it. Another thing is uh, there is low educational levels and in, the, in, this, in uh, the region because of conflicts going on, parents are not able to send their children to school. Something else which encourages our CSEC is the fact that uh, there is an inadequate birth registration in the region. So, uh, not knowing the age of the people of the children or hiding the age of the children, parents give them away very easily. As you know, uh, most of the time in uh, some countries where you have issue of uh, radicalism, where you have issue of uh, uh, religious, um, I would say, uh, intolerance, there is the issue of uh, gender discrimination. And uh, in countries like uh, Qatar, in uh, countries like uh, Saudi Arabia, Iran, it's easy to use girls and women for anything related to see uh, for, for in the sex trade. And sometimes society talk about something they call victim blaming. Okay, victim blaming. If a girl is not virgin, she is doomed not to be married and she can be sent away from the family and she and she will blame for herself for not being virgin even though it is most of the time society which creates opportunities of for raping for children who can no longer get married another issue is the sexual exploitation of boys people will be surprised that even though there is little evidence of boy prostitution, what I found in Sub-Saharan Africa is also noticeable in, uh, in uh, uh, Middle East and uh, Northern Africa, okay? There is a culture of silence around the issue of boy prostitution, okay? 
even though in the region, research has shown that it is uh, going on, but no one talk about it. Let me talk about those uh, boys we call uh, LGBTQ in the region. There are boys like that, and rich people do exploit them sexually, but no one wants to talk about it. Something else to finish with uh, um, Middle East is migration. According to uh, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, as of March 2020, more than 355,000 Libyan people are internally displaced. And among them, more than 50% of those people were children. Yet, limited data exists which sheds light on the reality, the harrowing realities of children exposed to sexual violence in the region. Let me move now, because of issue of time, to my next slide. Okay, South Asia. Okay, this goes to, um, I mean, uh, probably um, uh, countries of most of uh, people who probably are listening to me now. Okay, so I guess uh, many people will have, will show more interest uh, about that. So, South Asia. South Asia is a, a diverse region comprising countries like uh, uh, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, uh, Maldives, uh, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not trying to say anything new. Uh, it's a place where you have uh, uh, the fourth of the world population, which makes it uh, the most populous, populous and most densely populated um, geographical area in the world. I will be talking about now some of the factors of the vulnerability of vulnerability to CSEC related to South Asia. First, let me talk about uh, the issue of, uh, um, uh, let's say the. I just talked about the issue of a demographic, uh, which uh, is a big one. And then we have the issue of uh, economic, economic factors, okay? So, uh, despite progress made in overall economic growth in the region, poverty has uh, persisted in South Asia, okay? Because of uh, uh, economic inequality. Uh, research has shown that uh, maybe um, 571 people in South Asia live on less than uh, $1.25 a day. Okay? And uh, uh, South Asia, according to this study of 2020, show that uh, South Asia has the world largest concentration of poor people. While the root causes of the growing phenomenon of uh, CSEC is, uh, uh, is uh, various, okay, uh, are various, okay, there is no question uh, that um, as more families drift toward the social and economic margin of the society, ch children's vulnerability to CSEC, you know, is uh, exacerbated. Let me talk about another factor, low educational levels and child labor. According to UNESCO, you know, uh, South and even West Asia have made considerable gain over the last 20 years to ensure uh, universal primary education, which has reduced the number of out-of-school children. 
Okay? Yet, widespread child labor combined with um, inadequate education, poverty, children low status, and gender norms, okay, create a situation that is highly conducive to child sexual exploitation. For example, in Pakistan, in Pakistan, for example, child workers, especially those working in small hotels and restaurants, you know, are among the most susceptible, vulnerable to sexual exploitation. In Bangladesh, okay, UNICEF, a UNICEF study found that how the children in the study were initially involved in the in child labor. Issue also, talking about Pakistan, nearly 70,000 children were living and working on the streets of major cities. Now, street-based prostitution also includes children employed in the transport industry. Child prostitution takes place in train stations and bus terminals in some of those countries. Another issue, and I'm sure many people online now know about, is a child marriage, which is related to CSEC. The South Asia region, according to this study, has the highest prevalence of child marriage, okay, and the largest number of child brides in the world. Both boys and girls are affected by child marriage in the region, okay, but girls are more affected, okay, and according to our study, school dropout and child marriage make children highly vulnerable to exploitation, mostly for girls. A very interesting finding from that study is the issue of inadequate birth registration. Birth uh, registration correlates directly with preventing CSEC because when you know, when it is possible to, to, to know or to justify the age of people in the sex trade, it is possible then to identify them, target, target them, and save them. In that region, the issue of uh, lack of uh, birth registration is a big one. Another issue is gender discrimination and violence against women. Okay, so at this stage, we can say that uh, there are several forms of discrimination against children and gender inequality toward, toward the girl child in the region. For example, while boys are viewed, are often viewed as assets, okay, because they are brought to, uh, they are thought to assure uh, economic and social security uh, for families, girls continue to be seen as a liability. We know the case of uh, countries in pa like Pakistan and India. The endemic phenomenon of gender-based violence is yet another um, issue of discrimination against a girl. In India, of a total of 24,270 cases of rape reported in 2011, a staggering 30% okay, were committed against girls below age 18, okay? including even infants. That was in India. Even though boys are also sexually abused and exploited on a large scale, actually, CSEC remains a markedly gendered problem. In the region, in the region, it was noticed that actually in countries, I think, like um, uh, Pakistan, 
sexual exploitation of boys is even more noticeable, more prevalent than uh, sexual exploitation of girls, possibly because of religious, uh, I will say, strictness. Boys are easy praise for that. Which kind of takes me to the issue of harmful tradition and practices in South Asia. A number of beliefs and customs that are harmful to children and highly uh, gender discriminatory continue to be practiced through South Asia. Uh, and for example, in Afghanistan and parts of uh, Pakistan, there is a tradition of keeping boys for sexual gratification for rich and influential men, known as uh, Bachabazi. This tradition is still a lie, okay? And you have also victims, most victims, most of the time, most boys are usually teenage boys from impoverished families who may be dressed up as girls and taken as uh, mistresses. This happened in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Talking about India, there is the practice of Diva Dasi, uh, whereby a young girl is married to a Yelema, okay, the goddess of fertility, eventually forces the girl into prostitution as the dedication to Hindu deities not only require her to become sexually available for community members. I'm reading from that research which was done. So this is not a made up of fact by me. So the caste system, the caste system in, uh, in uh, uh, still prevalent in South Asia, despite uh, the change in legislation, not much can be done. Not much can be done. Okay, talking about uh, migration. Okay, there is not much research uh, to show how migration affects CSEC in South Asia. But research has shown that most children, they, they, they migrate, they, they migrate um, internally, okay? Uh, in their country or sometimes across countries, okay? Most of the time, to, they try to find jobs and, uh, uh, and also the issue of disaster will, will lead them to that. So uh, it is often talked about uh, children in, on the move. Talking about children on the move, Nepalese children, okay, have been found to be at high risk of sex trafficking in India. Some 20% of the hundreds of thousands being sexually exploited in the country every year in India are from Nepal. There are also issues about HIV, you know, uh, we, we know that um, in South Asia, um, South Asia have witnessed a 50% reduction of HIV prevalence among uh, women and men. Yet, yet it has been found that uh, those women who come, women and girls who come from Nepal, okay, are highly exposed to issue of HIV AIDS and they contract HIV and they spread it without knowing. Okay, so the increased vulnerability of children and women subjected to sexual exploitation, okay, has been highlighted a lot in that study. And I have uh, a list of my uh, sources you can consult more later. In Mumbai, Mumbai, that is India, 60% of women in prostitution are believed to be HIV positive. Okay, in Nepal, research recently conducted by ECPAC has shown the magnitude of the issue of HIV among the children who are victims of uh, sex uh, trafficking. So I will not uh, say more about that. I will move on because of issue of time. CSEC in East and Southeast Asia. Okay? The East and Southeast Asia region, as you know, is a large geographical area, okay? 
comprising six states in Eastern Asia and 11 countries um, in Southeastern Asia, uh, 10 of which are part of uh, uh, what they call Association of <coughs> Association of Southeast uh, Asian Nation, uh, which is also called uh, Asian. Mm -hmm. Thailand, Thailand and uh, uh, Cambodia and the Philippines, okay? These countries are some of the most popular destination for sex tourism in the world. Okay, so, let me talk a little bit about uh, uh, some of the vulnerability factors of, uh, for CSEC in the region. Of course, uh, the issue of uh, poverty and equality is rampant, rampant and uh, I underscore any issue of uh, CSEC. So I'm not going to talk about it longer. And also in the region, the issue of low educational levels and child labor is uh, similar to what I talked about uh, uh, about South Asia. The same can be said about gender discrimination and violence against women and girls, okay? A systematic review of research of child abuse in the region done in 2012 by UNICEF found high rates of various forms of child sexual abuse, neglect, violence, and exploitation across East Asia and the Pacific. Violence against children takes place in various settings, including family settings. Another issue that makes children highly vulnerable to CSEC is armed conflict, natural disasters, and displacement. Of all regions in the world, East Asia and the Pacific has the seven highest number of fragile and conflict, conflict affected countries. Uh, we counting countries like uh, Indonesia, which has conflict, Myanmar, and so on. Okay, so these issues are big one. And one issue everybody knows about is uh, the issue of uh, Ro Rohingya. Okay, you know, the media has reported a lot on that group, the, the refugee camps uh, run by traffickers who hold Ro Rohingyas, okay, children for ransom and then sell them or traffic them to Malaysia or other location. Uh, I can also talk about the issue of uh, uh, harmful um, practices in the region. Also, I'm not going to talk about it more, uh, issue of migration of children in the moon. You have also issue of uh, peer pressure. And talking about manifestation, okay, uh, the issue of uh, child prostitution in that region, okay, has been found through some studies, okay, which show that tens of thousands of children under 18 are being used in prostitution in East and Southeast Asia. The victims are mostly girls between age 14 and 17, but they are also boys, okay? And they are organized rings, prostitution rings, okay, in some of these countries in which parents actually uh, uh, put their children in prostitution. I uh, uh, have one paper, I have done a literature review on the issue of CSEC in uh, Southeast Asia. In that paper, I could, I, in that, the studies I reviewed, I noticed that in some countries, actually, uh, child prostitution is a part of the culture. So sometimes when researchers come to the region and they try to bring their mainstream views to show that it is the wrong thing, they are not welcome. They are not welcome in those countries. I think uh, some of these countries are Cambodia, uh, probably Thailand also. 
So it is a big issue that is affecting the region. Talking about uh, other issues, trafficking of children for sexual exploitation. Oh, here I can say that we don't have any clear statistics about the number of children who are victims of CSEC in the region. But according to a report by the United Nations Organization on Drug and Crime, during the period 2007 to 2010, children accounted for 40% of all trafficking victims in South and Southeast Asia and the Pacific, Pacific uh, victim of human trafficking, a large percentage than found in other regions in the world. And also, uh, research has shown that children in the region are affected by issue of sexual exploitation online or online sexual exploitation. As well, if, if there is what we call sexual exploitation of children in travel and tourism, which is actually called in, in uh, another term, child sex tourism. And uh, there, uh, it was found that the region experienced 6% of growth in tourism arrival in 2013. And that has led to increase in issue of child sex tourism. And Thailand is considered one of the biggest places for child sex tourism. Australia. Okay. Australia is also is viewed as a destination country for, pe for people being trafficked from Asia, primarily. Thailand, Korea, Philippines, and so on, so on. Okay, and yet, uh, yet, uh, uh, transnational trafficking of children for the purpose of sexual exploitation into Australia was rarely documented. Although CSEC is still relatively low, research showed that. The numbers being reported are not, do not reflect reality. Uh, people think that uh, because Australia is far away, remote, uh, it can be protected against CSEC. No, actually, it, uh, the issue of online CSEC is rampant, especially the issue of child pornography. Between 2014 and 2015, there were more than 5,000 investigations of people in possession of online child abuse material. Okay, we have talked briefly about those countries. And no matter how you view the issue, race, inequality, power, culture and globalization underscore all the factors of vulnerability I mentioned. Most of the victims are from minority groups. Most of the victims are from poor families or poor communities. In a 2015 article called The Racial Roots of Human Trafficking, Nelson Butler argued that race intersects, intersects with other forms of subordination to push people of color disproportionately into prostitution and keep them trapped in the commercial sex industry. Of course, uh, Nelson Butler is talking about the US. So I have to uh, make that clarification. She's talking about uh, the US. But as I said before, issue of race, inequality, are, are viewed in almost any issue of uh, CSE. So structural racism, drives women and girls of color to engage in prostitution. That is the most, I'm talking about the US then, but 
talking about a country like India, I can see that issue of caste, caste issue underscore the issue of uh, child sex trafficking, definitely. Okay, girls are often seen as commodities to be sold, okay? If that comes to the issue of power, okay? That's because people think that girls and women do, have, do not have power, they are, you know, people use them as transaction, trade, in, trade them, give them away for just, uh, for just uh, uh, to, to please others or to make profit, okay? Or to get, uh, to have access to land or some kind of authority. For example, in Ethiopia, Mauritania, and Niger, children, child brides are sold by the husband into the sex trade because of rejection by the family. Okay, so in the US and possibly in other countries of the world, perception of power and gender inequality can be noticed in the fact that girls and women are often pimped while boys and men in the sex trade are perceived to have agency in the sexual transaction. Actually, based on the study I have conducted, most boys victims of CSEC do not, less than 99% do not have any pain compared to girls who have, some of the girls have, but most of the boys do know. We can explain how society deals the issue. And also, people don't think that boys actually are victims. Any boys who come forward to, and go to the law enforcement and say, I'm victim, People will laugh at him because no one believes that boy can be victims of sexual exploitation. So this leads to the issue that many boys who are victims of sexual exploitation do not have anyone to listen to them. And I know that for sure in countries like Pakistan, in pa countries like um, uh, um, part of India, in country uh, like uh, Bangladesh, in a uh, country, uh, uh, I forgot the name, um, boys are actually uh, represent the highest number of uh, children being victimized. One thing I noticed which hurts both girls and boys in my research and in my review is that data you have on victim of CSEC most of the time are not disaggregated based on gender, on age, or sex. People, most of the time, we talk about women and girls. So we don't know exactly the number of girls affected. We don't know about boys affected. We don't know about the sex of those who are affected. And it goes on that way. So there should be research focusing on people specifically under the age 18, and research should be clear about the, the issue of boys and issue of girls. Okay, there is one um, uh, website. I will invite anyone who is interested in research on human trafficking to visit. It has been created just less than a year ago. It's called the Capture Trafficking Data Collaborative, which has a lot of studies, a lot of data from around the world. That website shows that the proportion of boy victims of sexual exploitation has taken a gradual upward trend. This is something I have already talked about. Almost 50% of victims of CSEC are boys. The, C the CTDC data shows that just 53% of the male victims trafficked into CSEC were children. Research shows the connection between CSEC and child migration inside and outside their countries. High demand of sex with children, coupled with an increase in child pornography worldwide, has led to high volume online sex, which has moved today in the dark web. What is dark web? The dark web is 90% of the internet. The internet, you and me, 
we actually search on every time we present just the tip of the iceberg. 90% of the internet is uh, hidden. That is called the dark web. On the dark web, actually, most issues of sex trafficking have moved to the dark web where people are trading, are sold, and the business goes on, and even law enforcement uh, are not able to track. Advances in, in the internet and mobile technology system increase children's vulnerability to child sex tourism. So it's important for us to be aware of that. But not, it's not given to anyone to assess the dark web because if you want to assess the dark web, you have to be well prepared. Otherwise, it's easy to be hurt. It's easy to, 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 to face issues you never expect to face. Based on that, I will say that society needs to have responses to CSEC. We need, uh, if we don't have any interest in issue, we have not had any interest in now, we need to start uh, raising awareness about CSE because children are victims and try now to, to, to study and learn more about uh, how information and uh, communication technology is uh, playing a role in children being victims of uh, CSEC today. Interpol is trying to do what it can, but more is to be done. And based on my own research, I can say this. People think that child prostitution is the biggest issue. I am probably someone who might be saying that Actually, child pornography is the biggest CSEC issue the world has ever known. And it's a CSEC issue, I would say, where you cannot save the victims, and it is going on. So, to better understand the amount of CSEC that is occurring, and to better understand those involved in CSEC, our governments around the world are uh, asked to create national databases which will be linked to one another and track nationally and uh, globally victims and offenders. So in its infancy, this will help better understand and combat CSEC because there has also been an emphasis to support legislation worldwide on the minimum age of marriage and the three and full consent to marry by all parties. I don't know if this can happen one day, but we need to be hopeful. Based on that, I want to thank you for your great patience in listen to me to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. I'm sorry, I've taken all the time. For... No, no problem. But your session, your, your, your presentation was very really wonderful. Okay. And I must thank to you for your systematic review of CSEC around the world that you have presented ample information on the form of CSEC in different countries. Yes. Really, it is a very wonderful talk, wonderful presentation. And your presentation has clearly described that all countries around the world have been affected by the CSEC. Definitely, definitely. Whether yes. it is a country of origin, uh, transit or destination, or in three, all, all three forms, no? Definitely, yeah. But the most important thing is that from your yeah. presentation, I must sum up mm -hmm. that the children are very vulnerable because of their demographic factors, yeah. mm -hmm. because of their age, their mm -hmm. educational status, their socioeconomic yeah. background. Okay, and, yeah. uh, and it also combined with many cultural factors. Okay, and yeah. uh, you well explained about the cultural factors, the practices going around the Latin Americas, uh, around Africa, uh, in fact, in Southeast Asia and South Asia. No, many cultural factors and religious factors combined with this, uh, the CSEC. Yeah. So, um, I must, um, th this is a very wonderful session, and uh, there's, uh, you know, I. Uh, so many our participants 
uh, have raised so many queries, questions, and um, now I welcome our colleague, Dr. Raspi Pramanik, to take a few questions so that uh, we can have a you know, chat with Dr. Charles. Uh, Rasmi, it's up to you. Yeah, I would like to congratulate for the very interesting presentation by given by Charles on the global commercial sexual exploitation of children. Just very quickly, I would like to um, present the gist and then we shall switch over to the question and answers. Professor Charles gave a very broad and clear overview of the commercial sexual exploitation of children, wherein he focused basically on two important things, the factors of vulnerability and the commercial sexual exploitation of children manifestation and the emerging trends. Firstly, he spoke about the commercial exploitation of children in Europe, where children represent 43% of all the identified human trafficking traces in Europe, basically focusing on the unaccompanied minors who go missing and the routine exploitation of children. Then he focused on the commercial social, uh, sexual exploitation of children in USA, and it is estimated that 403,000 victims of modern race slavery is there and 84% of sex trafficking victims of USA in citizens. Then he spoke about the commercial sexual exploitation in the Latin America, where this region consists of 20 countries. It is a region of destination, origin, and transit of men, women, and children subjected to forced labor and sex trafficking. It is estimated that over 2 million Latin American children are victims. Then he spoke about the region of the sub uh, Saharan Africa, which includes 46 countries and considered it is the world's poorest and the least developed region. Child's victims are in sex trade, not only in survival, but to provide economic assistance for family dependents. There he focused upon two important things, that is the gender-based violence countries and the religious and cultural practices in the region used to facilitate sexual exploitation. Then I spoke about the region of Middle East and North Africa, which consists of 13 countries, but there are significant geopolitical and humanitarian challenges in the Middle East that limit the operation and dissemination of knowledge about children's experience. Then he focused on the South Asia, which has about one fourth of the world's population, which has 1.62 million people, mostly diversely populated geographical region. And this is a very complex matrix. That is the low education, child labor, poverty, child marriage, gender discrimination, birth registration. These are interrelated factors which shape and force the circumstances to allow commercially sexual, sexually exploitation. Then he came to speak about exploitation of the children in the East and Southeast Asia, which is a very large and geographical area, which consists of states and 11 countries, where the Thailand, Cambodia, and Philippines are the most popular destination of sex tourism in the world. Lastly, he spoke about the region of Australia, and Australia is a destination of country where people are being uh, transferred for uh, trafficked from Asia. He focused on the race, inequality, power, culture, and globalization of this exploitation, where he's basically focused on three things, that is structural racism, girls are seen as commodities to be sold, and child brides are sold by their husbands into the sex trade. And finally, he focused on the societal responses. So thank you very much, Professor Charles, for your wonderful presentation. There are just a couple of questions which I would like to raise and which uh, probably the participants have uh, put forth, and I would like uh, you to respond to it. First question is, social media reports show that 
local militant group like Bokarma and other such type of organization is one of the financial source of income from commercial, sexual, child trafficking business. What is your opinion? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the great summary you have provided. And uh, I can say this is a great question. And I think um, uh, this question is uh, very interesting. And I know that uh, uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Louis Olatudi, will be the great person to answer that because I have not studied it. But what I know is that Boko Haram, Boko Haram, people might be talking about Boko Haram um, using children they kidnapped from their villages. But from what I know, they take those children as wives. Of course, this is also, uh, uh, I would consider it sister because they are forced against their will to be wives, um, like child or married. When I talk about uh, the, the people in the uh, uh, Middle East, or uh, the, the place like uh, the, the ISIL, ISIL in uh, is it Middle East, uh, I, uh, with uh, Iraq, Syria, these people, they use children from a specific minority group. I cannot remember the minority group. Uh, in Iraq, and they were using them, selling them actually to get money for their business. But I can say this there is no way uh, the, uh, the groups, terrorist groups, can get enough money from selling women and girls to continue uh, like waging war as they are. They rely mostly on uh, economic resources uh, they are able to, 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 to grasp. And they use both children possibly, mostly as wives, and also as assets for their soldiers who have been away from their wife for a long time. Of course, this can, consider, can be considered seasick, but we should not be relying on the, what the media said because most of the time, me, the media doesn't have the facts. Again, I recognize that these children being sexually exploited are victims, but these children, the resources, the benefits, the profit they make are not the, the bulk of what they use for the, uh, the war or attacking other countries. They rely on economic resources they were able to grasp. Thank you, Charles. There is another question. How okay. are the laws enforced in the countries? You have discussed in accordance to commercial sexual exploitation of children. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question. First of all, I will say that uh, many countries, Many countries in the world uh, started, uh, uh, let's say, taking the issue of uh, CSEC or child sex trafficking seriously only after the global conference, the global meeting on the commercial sexual exploitation, which was organized in 1996 in Stockholm which was followed by another one in uh, Brasilia in 2003, and the third one, I cannot remember the country. So the first one provided, I will say, a sort of trigger for almost 150 countries which participated in that Congress, uh, that's the World, yeah, the World Congress on the Commercial Sexual Exploitation, and all the countries, they took an engagement, a commitment to really go back and de develop a national plan uh, to address the issue of commercial sexual exploitation. Since then, a lot of work has been done by more than 175 countries. Almost all of them have a plan 
to address the issue of uh, commercial sexual exploitation. And ECPAT, ECPAT International, you need to learn about this group. You can see them in my final uh, slide. They are, I would say, the spearhead. They are the vanguard of uh, all NGOs in the world trying to monitor the way companies are trying to develop laws and implement laws. And by the way, every two or three years, they spend money to conduct a study to evaluate how countries are doing. I can find uh, 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 an evaluation of how every country is doing in the world just uh, by searching the internet, telling countries what they have achieved well, what they need to do better. So there are many laws in place, but the problem, the biggest problem is that traditions, cultural practices, and also corruption are issues preventing the, the implementation of any law regarding CSEC. US, as I said before, has the, probably the best law, anti-trafficking law, about uh, even child trafficking in the world. I can say that because I have written about it, but they are not able to stop it. The laws are good, but most people who are preying on children in the sex trade are highly placed, are highbrow people. These are powerful people in the system, in educational system, in the law enforcement system, in the criminal justice system, in the banking system, who are preying on children. And since these people are among the lawmakers, are among the decision makers, it is difficult to get them. The law does not affect them because they are highly placed. And actually, most victims of boy prostitution, let's say 90% of them are people who are highly educated and they are untouchable. And imagine that the one researcher, the first researcher who tried to raise issue about boy prostitution in the US, he, he died mysteriously. No one was able to explain how he died. And everybody now is afraid of talking about the issue. And also, one issue that US uh, judicial system has on book a lot of laws to address the issue of child pornography, but little has been done, even though, even though research has shown that, I will say, more than 50% of uh, child pornography, um, I will say, uh, uh, child pornography traffic is happening in the US. Even though it has a law, it does not work. And also, there is a law in the US to punish any US citizens going abroad to, to victimize children in the sex trade. But despite that, the law is not working because in most countries, people protect those traffickers. So the laws are good. It is uh, the implementation of the law which has a lot of flaws. Well, well explained, Charles. There's Thanks. one more question. What is okay. the role of family in commercial sexual exploitation of children in countries apart from South Asia? Okay. Um, where in South Asia, I would say uh, where? In the world or in South Asia? What, can you repeat your question? What are the role of family? in commercial sexual exploitation of children in countries apart from South Asia? Okay. Okay. That is a good question. Even though I have not studied it much, I can say based on what I have read, um, in some countries, um, some parts of Asia, uh, families are in systems in which they do not have any way to get out of poverty. Some families uh, and children 
in those families were born in the sex trade. And they seem to be doomed, to be doomed to be in that business. And they cannot get out. Also, in some countries, based on what I read, what I reviewed, uh, child prostitution is part of the culture in the community, in the village. And children, uh, like girls, view, uh, view their participation in prostitution as a, a, a rite of passage. Like, if you want to get married, you have to go through that uh, transaction. You have to prove that you are able to make money through that. So, this is an issue I do not blame any families because I saw in my story families who were really, really suffering and their only daughter was only their salvation. And there was no way I could blame how they were condoning the, the girl doing what she was doing. The problem is that the, the national system of social welfare most of the time, fail to help most families. And they do what they have to do to survive in any country. So the issue is not only, only, only related to Asia or South Asia or Southeast Asia. It's everywhere. And families, you, you cannot blame them for, for selling or for giving their children away. It's because they are really, really out of solution and they do it out of... Uh, out of, uh, I mean, out of, what we say, desperation. So that's what I can say. And in studies I did in Sub-Saharan Africa, I noticed that uh, uh, there are men who have many wives. They have three, four, five wives. They do not do anything, but women have to just feed them. So women, some women rely on their, their daughters to go and get money to feed their fathers. I noticed that. And one of the cases I noticed, which kind of get me to think, to, I mean, to think hard before blaming families, is that there was a girl, a girl of 15 years old, and she was being taken care of by her elder sister. Her father is disabled. Her, mo her mother has issues of mental health. And suddenly, and her elder sister has a daughter, a baby, and suddenly the sister died. That daughter told me she had to come to the city, find money, stay to take care of her sister, baby, and take care of her father, and take care of her mother who was sick. So, can I blame such a woman? No. Okay, but I need to put some, uh, some kind of uh, but there. I will say some families also Actually, they do this as business. They do not need money, but they use their own family members to make money. But I can say that most of them, it's because they are at the end of their terror. And they cannot be blamed if there are no solution to, uh, if there are not alternatives to help of them. Thank you, Charles. There is one last question I would like to ask. Okay. Whether the poverty or the low status is the principal factor to sexual exploitation. Can, can you say it again? Whether the poverty or the low status is the principal factor for sexual exploitation. Okay, uh, that is a, a very good uh, question. In, uh, in uh, many countries, in many countries, you know, uh, the underlying issue on um, almost any uh, issue of trafficking, the highest vulnerability factor is poverty. And when you talk about poverty, you are already talking about low status. Because most people who are poor have, uh, have a low income status. So it's related. But, but in countries like the U.S., in countries like the U.S., I can say this: some of victims or victims in commercial sexual exploitation 
are not from poor families. They are from rich families and they have they, they are run away, throw away. Okay? Who have decided to in some way to uh, to rebel against their families who are in conflict with the families and they run from home and when they run from home in less than 48 hours they are uh, they are targeted by uh, pimps and traffickers who will who will force them into prostitution these children are rich from rich families and once they're in this business sometimes you know families will spend money to get them back but pimps are very smart what they do they break the will they control those children through drug through psychological <laughs> control and those children will hate the family and will not want to go back they would prefer to help to continue uh, uh, being exploited even though their family is rich so I will say most cases is because of poverty, but some a part of victims of trafficking are not from poor families. Another thing, some of the victims, it happened that a child who will be walking alone on an empty in an empty street is highly vulnerable to kidnapping people. In the US, I know for sure, have been kidnapping a lot of children that they forced into prostitution. Every month in the US, there are hundreds of missing children, and research shows that out of six kidnapped missing children, at least one is victim of trafficking. And some of these children are from rich families. So it doesn't matter. The, the level of um, fortune, of wealth of the family, if the child is in a vulnerable situation, she can fall victim. Another thing, we can put the children from rich families in a vulnerable position is that the, the children from rich families have easier access to internet, to information and communication technology. So, the fact that they have access to uh, information technology, they are highly vulnerable, highly accessible to traffickers who target them and lure them out of the, the house houses to put them in uh, the sex trade, even though their families are rich. So being rich is not a protection. And also, I found in my study, uh, probably my study is one of the first ones to show it, I, in my study, I noticed that being educated is not a great protect, protective factor against CSEC. Because most studies say, oh, when a child is educated at least for high school or secondary school, they can avoid trafficking. No, it is actually being educated makes children, make children um, uh, easy, easy target because they are able to read, to speak, to go on the internet, and that makes them easy targets for trafficking. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles. It was really very amazing. Okay, I you. request my colleague, uh, Professor Arun Acharya, to conclude the session. OK, OK, OK. I think I sent this, the I sent my Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rasmi, uh, for moderating the session. And okay. I must thank uh, Dr. Charles. But uh, the you know the very interesting questions raised by our participants. One of the question which a little bit I want to add about the role of family. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, in the case of Mexico, I have seen uh, there is a you know tribal or indigenous community in the central part of Mexico, and the state is known as the Tlaxcala. Okay. And I have seen uh, during my stay in Mexico that every year in that community yeah. they organize a, a, a um, carnival. 
Okay. Like the Carnival, like the Brazil. Yeah. And probably this thing is also covered by the National Geography and the BBC. Yeah. And you must, you, you, you must have idea about that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and during the Carnival, uh, the indigenous uh, uh, the family or the tribal families, yeah. they deliberately offered their daughter. Okay. okay. And the okay. most of these, the girls are minor in age. Okay. Okay. And uh, they deliberately offered their daughter to get married with the uh, um, with the outsider, and probably okay. those are outsiders are the most of the time they are the traffickers. Okay. And uh, we have seen, and during in, in my study also we have found that from yeah. that community there is a direct connection with the Chicago and the New York and the Los Angeles. Once they get married in that community, they take to that minor, okay, okay. with the you know tourist visa. Basically, it yeah. is very easy for Mexico to get the U.S. visa, okay, okay. and uh, then they exploit the heart in the Chicago and New York, yeah. and uh, you know, and this I have seen, and this 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 become a so many for many families this become a survival status. Mm -hmm. Because many okay. indigenous communities in the central mm -hmm. and the southern part of the Mexico, there, they, yeah. you know, they are, they are very poor. Okay. And yeah. offering their daughter and they're staying in the United States, you know, this they, they send you know money, and many mm -hmm. families, you know, they survive on that way. Okay. So okay. you know, this is very interesting um, role of family. The another thing that I I I I, I want to add uh, what Charles said that the, uh, regarding the education. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I forgot the name of her, but uh, two years back a paper published in the you know journals of human trafficking about the sugar daddy and the, where my friend and the charge the most admitted about this term, the sugar daddy, you know. Basically, yeah. you know, the, uh, the college or the school gave a phone from this, uh, you know, the uh, financial help from the other person, and yeah. and later on they trapped with uh, with with that person, no? And yeah. then, and this leads to the in the process of the trafficking and the sexual exploitation. And this mm -hmm. phenomena, the phenomena of the sugar is the uh, well, well, when it started from the U.S. Now I have seen these things started in Mexico, in many other Latin Americas countries, and in fact in India also it has started. You can yeah. you can see in many private universities where they are, you know, they are, uh, they have to pay lots of these uh, tuition fees, okay, and uh, it's very difficult for the for family to get that money. So mm -hmm. most of the time, the uh, in the metropolitan cities, these girls they work, uh, they, they they get contact with the sugar daddies, and they get yeah. the financial help for their, you know, uh, for their mm -hmm. studies. But Definitely. thing is, they up to date. Definitely. And I have Definitely. seen. Trap uh, the network and the for and and the process are going on, no? Yeah, so definitely. these are the you know some of the things that I I, I just want to add with the Charles. Yeah, okay. perfect. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know Do you know Tenancigo? Yeah, that 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 that's when I I was okay. talking that one. Okay, I was okay, there. Okay. 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 It, it is popular. Yeah. Yeah, the participant they can Google in the you know, the color yeah. okay it's egg with X mm -hmm. they can get uh, you know the lots of videos out there how the they trapped in the, during the carnival you know it's mm -hmm. a very interesting it's yeah. a cultural practice it's a cultural yeah, practice yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. happening in front of you know, everybody is present yeah. in front of you know, the the police it's happening yeah. with those, those many yeah. people participate there so there is yeah. no control about that yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is true. It is true. It is true. It is true. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Arun. Thank you, very much. thank you. Thank you very much, Charles, for this wonderful session. Yeah, I you. also thank all our participants for being with us yeah, and uh, rising their bell, valuable queries. You know? And because yeah. um, this, uh, this session is, uh, uh, I think, one of the longest session we have last three days. And uh, we enjoyed, really, we enjoyed a lot. Really, we enjoyed a lot. And, uh, we, we could not imagine how to our time. So, um, thank you very much, Charles. And uh, I, I request all our participants.
prepared that tomorrow is the day for our of our international webinar. Okay. And tomorrow, Dr. Nora Hasim uh, okay. from South Africa, she is going yeah. to present yeah. about yeah. on an effort to address the human trafficking in Eastern Africa. So yeah. I request all our participants to yeah. join tomorrow. And yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Really, really. Um, uh, I must thank our speakers, our resource person, and our, all participants. That is, is, is being is um, really is um, means uh, um, making more livable and more you know the, bringing so many discussions, so many ideas, you no, know, uh, yeah. and uh, about the human trafficking and the migration problems is going around the world. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank and good night. Now, now I'm going to good bed. Night. I'm going to, I'm okay. going to bed now. It's big, it's midnight. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Good night, Charles. Okay, Thank, bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, see, see you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, bye bye.